This video is sponsored by my gaming channel SideQuest. Stick around at the end to find out more about the great content you can find by following the link in the comments. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan features what many consider to be the best space battle ever depicted in film. While other movies showcase more spectacle and more explosive action, the first encounter between the Reliant and Enterprise, between Khan and Kirk, remains utterly captivating. So in this video, I wanted to explore the reasons why it's so good, to break down the filmmaking techniques and creative choices which make the scene such a standout. Now, obviously, I'll be using a lot of movie clips here, which runs the risk of the video getting snagged by YouTube's broken copyright claim system. So if you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, I'd highly recommend joining my Patreon where you can see videos early as well as gain access to some exclusive content as well. The link will be in the description below. The first component of why the scene works so well is of course the palpable sense of tension. And this scene in The Wrath of Khan is classic Hitchcockian filmmaking. Hitchcock often defined tension this way. Four people are sitting around a table talking about baseball, whatever you like. Five minutes of it, very dull. Suddenly, a bomb goes off, blows the people to smithereens. What do the audience have? Ten seconds of shock. Now take the same scene and tell the audience there is a bomb under that table and will go off in five minutes. Well, the whole emotion of the audience is totally different because you've given them that information that in five minutes' time, that bomb will go off. Now the conversation about baseball becomes very vital because they're saying to you, don't be ridiculous, stop talking about baseball, there's a bomb under there. You've got the audience working. This same basic principle is what drives the scene in The Wrath of Khan, only this time instead of a ticking bomb, we have a eugenicist superhuman bent on revenge. We know Khan intends to attack the Enterprise and eventually kill Kirk, but Kirk has no idea what's coming. We watch at the edge of our seats hoping Kirk will finally realise something is wrong and ready the Enterprise for combat before Khan can attack. The longer things are drawn out and the longer Kirk doesn't twig, the more tense the scene becomes. This is accentuated by the editing and shot choices as well. A very simple idea in film editing is long shots build tension and short shots release it. A classic example is seen in Sergio Leone westerns where the lead up to a shootout can take several minutes and the actual gunshots are over in a few seconds. This kind of thing is all over the Wrath of Khan. The camera starts stationary in wide, long shots, but as the scene ratchets up the tension, we move closer, eventually breaking up the shots into smaller close-ups. The one moment the tension is briefly broken before the attack is when Kirk moves the Enterprise to yellow alert. We have this long push-in on Kirk lasting eight seconds as he thinks things over, but the moment he calls for yellow alert, we cut quickly between several extreme close-ups, some of which last less than a second. However, the tension soon returns with another long five-second shot of Kirk and Spock. The principle behind the editing then shifts slightly. Rather than holding on long shots and then another burst of short ones, the scene counts down with the shots getting shorter and shorter until the opening phaser blast. Complementing this countdown though is the dialogue. Even if the viewer is not a hardcore Trekkie and doesn't have foreknowledge of how shields and phasers work, the dialogue provides enough context for anyone to get it. We're able to infer that shields can stop phasers, and therefore Khan's objective is to attack the Enterprise before it can raise shields, and Kirk's eventual objective should be to raise the Enterprise's shields before the Reliant can fire. Raise ours. Their shields are going up. Lock phasers and tires. They're locking phasers. Ray shields. Fire! This simple repetition not only raises the tension until it breaks, but it also shows us how Khan is literally a step ahead of Kirk in this scene. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention the music, which just like the editing and direction, does a brilliant job of hooking the audience into the scene. It was important that three themes be your principal themes and then have maybe a motif or two that were very short but narrated other things. And themes were tended to be long melodies and the motifs could be short blasts of things. Khan didn't have a long theme. Khan had a high sort of warlike thing that I did in the high French horns which was um, 
da 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 and it's very short and it's accompanied with this sort of percussion um da 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 sort of figure but it helps you know right away that that's Khan's music and it's very short and distinctive and that plays against the theme of the Enterprise, which is a long melodic thing. I wanted it to be really something that was strong um, and warlike, and to me, the high horns, in terms of color, did that. Not the not the trumpets, um, but in terms of sheer power. Um, I think it was eight French horns did that. It was something that I could play that was a short blast of power. It wasn't really a theme, it was just sort of a motif for Khan. And then I could do that, and then when you cut back to, to Kirk, you could have Kirk's theme very simply dun 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 bum dun and it was that motif and then you could cut away to so that these chases could be very easily theme driven because there were a lot of there was a lot of battle music and it had to and it was incessant and I had to find a way to musically say who was what and what was who and who was damaged, who was not damaged. And that helped a great deal knowing how the battle was going. And I think that that is really, really important when you are having long battle sequences. The way the motifs are deployed in this scene is incredibly effective. We hear Khan's motif three times before the Reliant opens fire, going up a note each time. We only hear the Enterprise motif once when Kirk steps up to Yellow Alert. This is damn peculiar. Yellow Alert. Energized defense fields. However, it's much more subtle than Khan's theme, not given the same fanfare. It shows us that Kirk has his suspicions, but another burst of Khan's theme shows us Khan is the one with all the power. And so with all of these components working together, the Hitchcockian sense of tension, the shot choices and editing pulling us into the action, and the score telling us Khan has the upper hand, within only two and a half minutes the viewer is totally engrossed and completely blown away by that first phaser blast. <laughs> But what's even more satisfying is how the same techniques are applied at the end of the scene where Kirk manages to reverse the situation and counterattack the Reliant. This time it's Kirk who is the bomb under the table, or rather the Reliant's prefix code is, and it's the audience who is ahead of Khan rather than Kirk. We start with wide long shots which get closer and shorter as time goes on, with Khan this time literally providing us with a countdown. 45 seconds, 15 seconds. And after Khan's theme has dominated the scene for so long, finally the Enterprise theme comes in with a blast as the phasers fire. Fire! By mirroring the earlier techniques when Khan got the drop on Kirk, this reversal is extra cathartic. The same creative choices which made this first clash so great also applies to the final confrontation in the Mutara Nebula, and much of these filmmaking principles also apply to the Kitimer battle in the Undiscovered Country and Viridian III battle in Star Trek Generations. But this sequence from The Wrath of Khan is simply pitch perfect. A great showcase of Star Trek's characters and drama, while also being an excellent showcase of some brilliant filmmaking. This video is sponsored by my gaming channel, SideQuest. Up until recently, it's really just been a fun hobby, but recently we've committed to really growing the channel. Our main two series right now are deep dives, video essays, in-depth reviews, and other analytical videos on our favourite, or indeed least favourite games, and licensed game Hell, a gameplay series where we sit down and have a laugh playing games exclusively licensed from movies and TV shows. We upload something new every two weeks, alternating between the two series, 
series. It would really mean a great deal if you could show the same support to SideQuest as you've done on this channel. Head over by clicking the link down below to check out our videos, as well as subscribing so you can stay up to date with all the new uploads. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members, where you can see videos early, as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.